Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to all of those who are with us here in person at Salem, as, as well as those who are with us uh, on live stream. I have several announcements I'd like to make. First of all, after church, once again, we need somebody to help us with the paraments uh, because we're going from white this Sunday to green next Sunday. Now, every Sunday we've had to change the pyramids. I promise you, this is the last time you'll do it for quite a long time. Because starting next Sunday, we're in the Pentecost season. And the Pentecost season is green. And that season lasts through June, July, August, September, October, till the first Sunday of Advent, which is the, usually the last Sunday of November, or first Sunday of December. So it's going to be green for a long time so you can relax after changing it this Sunday. There might be a couple Sundays during that time when we go to red or white, but by and large, it's going to be green for the next several months. Right, Joseph? See, he's not in an agreement with me. All right. Secondly, uh, Joseph informed his church that he's applying for membership at the AGO. And there are several different levels, but it costs money to apply and to be qualified. And if you want more details, talk to Joseph about it after church. But it costs money. Uh, Joseph told me probably about $3,500 altogether. So this church has decided to help Joseph with that because we benefit also from it. So we've given him $1,000 now, $500 in the fall. That's what the church council decided. And if you look on the website, there'll be a place where you can make personal contributions. So we hope to at least make that another $500 so we can give him at least $2,000 towards the $3,500 that he needs. If you, we get more, that'll be fine. But you can make donations. So I'm speaking to people on live stream, speaking to people here at church. We can give donations to help Joseph uh, in his career. So we appreciate Joseph. He's done a wonderful job, and he has certainly been a gift from God to this congregation. So this is a small way in which we can say thank you. So look at the website. If you want to know more about what he's doing, ask him. I really don't understand it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, also today in our congregational prayers, we will be remembering Chad Buchwalter, uh, who had a little problem while he was on vacation. He had a blood clot and now is safely back home but still undergoing treatment and has to be careful. So we want to remember Chad in our prayers, uh, as well as Don. I found out Don is looking at surgery towards the end of this summer. So we want to keep Don in our prayers that God may give him strength and courage as he faces what lies ahead. Uh, I believe that's all the announcements I have, unless there's some other announcements we need to make. Oh, and welcome back to Leslie, who had her successful surgery. Uh, I guess she's doing well. Can you? She said that she, her eyes are so much better, she never truly realized how handsome I was until after her eye surgery. So I, I appreciate that comment. And also, welcome back to Eleanor. Eleanor is a resident at Smithfield Western, and I, I guess her presence here means they've opened the building up and allowing people to leave and come to worship again. So Eleanor, it's good to see you back with us after a long absence. And with that, let us formally begin our worship service, for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. 
We continue with our gathering hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. If you want to follow along with the music, it's found on your red hymnals at hymn 408. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord. Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy Christ with the Holy Spirit in 
Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for it. And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, you put to death the d deeds of the body you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Gospel for this Sunday is a reading from the Gospel of St. John in the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I'd like to ask you to go ahead and sit down. It's a long Gospel reading, and I'd rather have you listening to the words and wondering how much longer before you can sit down. So uh, this is an interesting story. It's uh, one that I'm sure we all know well, and it concerns a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. 
He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. For what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who was descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O Lord God, our, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this day offering our thanks and our praise on this Holy Trinity Sunday. O Lord, we were reminded of the many gifts that you bestowed down upon us, the creative God, the loving God, the forgiving God. O Lord, we ask that you now open our hearts and minds to your word, that in our worship we may lift up our hearts and praise to you. In his name. Amen. You know, I, I just love the story that uh, we've already just listened to. Uh, it's the story of Nicodemus. I just love this story with Nicodemus. But we're going to take a look at that story. But the first question to ask ourselves, exactly, who was Nicodemus? Well, we know a few things about Nicodemus. We know, for instance, that Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Now, who were the Pharisees? The best way to understand who Pharisees were is to think of them as religious lawyers. Because that's kind of what they were. The Pharisees were a religious group that found its beginning during the time of what is known as the Babylonian captivity. Now, for those who don't remember that, that was a time in Israel when King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon, conquered Israel and took Jerusalem and then took all the leading people, the best folks there, all, the leaders of, Jeru of Israel, and took them off to be slaves in Babylon. And while they were there, there was a group of religious leaders who said, you know, the reason we're here, I think, is because we failed to keep God's laws. And so they said, well, I tell you what, let's dedicate ourselves to understanding what that law is and explaining it to the people of Israel so that they too can keep the laws so that this will never happen again. I mean, what started out very nobly went bad, though, unfortunately, because they carried it too far. The law became an end-all and be-all to them, and they developed laws upon laws upon laws. In fact, the record, I think, was 37 laws to explain what work was on the Sabbath, so what you could do and what you couldn't do. You could take, for instance, so many steps from your house, and that was not work. Take one more, that was work. So they went a little too far, and because of that, they became very legalistic. And for Pharisees, it came to be about all about the law, about keeping the law, about obedience to the law, and not about the spirit of the law. Remember, these were people who said, you can't heal somebody on the Sabbath day, because that's against the law. And then when Jesus responds to them by saying, I don't believe you people. If your ox fell into the ditch, you'd pull him out because you need the ox. But this poor woman, you're going to let her remain a cripple for another day. 
That's not the spirit of the law. So those were who the Pharisees were. And Nicodemus was one of these guys. He was a Pharisee. But we also know that he just wasn't any old Pharisee either, though. He was one of the best. He was a leader. It says a leader of the Jews. What does that mean? He was a member of the Jewish Sanhedrin. The Jewish Sanhedrin was the ruling council of all Israel. Even at the time of the Roman occupation, they still basically governed Israel. This was a group that took on all of the rules, all the regulations, and saw to it that Israel remained a law-abiding country. So this was, this was the same group, by the way, who tried Jesus on that night. Remember when they arrested him in the Gethsemane and they took him off? Where did they take him? To a meeting of the Sanhedrin. And we suspect that people like Nicodemus was there. So was a guy named Joseph of Arimathea, who we think was also a Pharisee. Now we run into those guys later because they're the ones who got the body of Jesus and buried it. But they were there, probably at the trial. This is who Nicodemus was. This was an important person. A Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin, a leader of Israel. He was one of the big shots. But he was also one of the big shots who we know was really interested in Jesus. He heard some things about Jesus. He had heard some things that Jesus had said, and he was very impressed. And so he was becoming convinced that maybe, maybe this Jesus was somebody special. Maybe, just maybe, maybe he might be the one. And yet Nicodemus was one of the in crowd. He liked his position. He liked the favoritism he got from that position. And he was afraid that if word got out that he liked this Jesus and was found to be cavorting with Jesus, well, who knows how the other Pharisees might act? Who knows how the other members of the Sanhedrin might act? The other members of the in crowd might act. They might begin to wonder about him. Maybe they would expel him from his position. Begin to wonder if he should even be on the council. And I guess that explains why Jesus, why Nicodemus didn't go see Jesus any old time. When did he go? The middle of the night. You can almost see Nicodemus sneaking down the dark alleys and jumping in and out of doorways so he's making sure he's not being followed, not being seen, until he finally gets to where Jesus was in the middle of the night. He plays it safe, which is why I find it ironic when he says to Jesus in our lesson, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. I mean, if he really and truly believed that, if he really and truly believed that this Jesus was a teacher who had come from God, if he really and truly believed that this Jesus was one who had come from the presence of God himself, well, then why was he so afraid of what his colleagues would think? Why was he so afraid that they might see him going to see Jesus? And why did he feel he had to go in the middle of the night? And I think that's maybe why Jesus tells him that he has to be born again. He is too much of this world. He's too much tied to the stuff of this world. He's worrying too much about what his friends might think or what his friends might say and not worrying enough about what God is thinking. And so he needed to be born again. He needed to be born to a new life. He needed to become a new and different person. He needed to set different priorities. Maybe the problem was not with Jesus, but the problem was with his friends. Maybe he needed to get new friends. He needed to be born again. He needed to be born as a child of God. But you know, as I read this story of Nicodemus, <laughs> I got to tell you, I feel a lot of affinity with this man because there's a lot of Nicodemus in me. I mean, I think I'm a good Christian. I, I, I think that my faith is where it needs to be. But then sometimes, sometimes, I worry too much about what other people might think of me. I worry too much 
about fitting in with my friends. I worry too much about people liking me. And who of us doesn't want to be liked? And so sometimes I get caught up in things that really aren't good for me. You know, the other day I was uh, watching one of those news magazines on TV, and they were telling a very sad story about a group of high school girls who had been arrested. I think it was either Texas or Arizona, somewhere in the Southwest. They had taken one of their classmates out to a secluded spot and just wailed on her. I mean, beaten her to the point of unconsciousness, to the point where she had to be hospitalized in critical condition. Now, fortunately, the girl lived to the point that, that she would live, but who knows with what, how many scars, both physical and emotional. Now, the other girls all said they were angry with this girl because of something or other she had done at school. One, she had stolen her boyfriend. One, she had turned her in for cheating on a test. And I can't remember what the third one was. But the third, the fourth girl was actually a friend of the girl who got beaten up. And so they asked her why she had done it. Why had she joined in with the other three girls in beating her up? And she replied, because all my friends were hitting her. So I just joined in. Sometimes we're all like that. We, we worry too much about fitting in. We worry too much about what our friends think. And that's why Jesus told Nicodemus that he needs to be born again. He needs to become a child of God. St. Paul, I think, uh, said it best. He said that we may live in this world, but we are not of this world. I'm going to say that again. He said, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And what he meant is that we live by different standards. We are children of God. We are a people who ask why we should not be better. You know, I, I remember when I was at Zion, uh, people used to ask me why we gave so much to our synod. We were either number one or number two the whole time I was there at Zion. I think the high point is we were given $80,000 a year to the Senate. And I would get questions, sometimes by council members, sometimes by people at, uh, at Zion itself. Why are we giving, you know, if we kept some of that money at home, Pastor, we could do so much more here with our church. Why, we maybe we could get some repair work done we, we need. But every time I was asked that question, I would always remember to tell them that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. In fact, it became kind of a personal thing of honor. Uh, for those who knew Sandy Mitchell, who was the pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in Ashland, I know the Leslie and her husband knew him. Uh, him and I were always having a contest each year because every year after our churches established their budgets, one of us would call the other and say, okay, what are you giving this year? Because Ashland and Zion were always one, two in the Senate giving. Why do we do that? Yeah, we could have kept the money at home, but it's important for us to remember who we are, that we are in this world, but we are not of the world. When people used to ask me why we spent so much time and energy at DZ at 6, why couldn't we spend our time and energy and our funds? Gosh, that might cost us money. Why didn't we spend it elsewhere? I had to remember that we are in this world, but we are not of the world. When I see a friend who is hurting, Am I re and I'm really busy, and I need to be moving on, I stop and take time and I listen because I remember that I am in this world, but I am not of this world. When I stop and think on a given day how badly I acted towards another human being, how many people I have hurt by words that I have misspoken, words that I spoke in anger, and when I could excuse myself by saying, well, everybody else does that, so why should I care? I need to pause and seek and make amends because I remember that I am in this world, but I am not of this world. To be a child of God is not like wearing a coat, something that we put on or take off as a situation pleases us. Being a Christian is more like our skin. 
It's not what we do. It's who we are. But that only comes, as Jesus reminded Nicodemus, if we're born again. If we give ourselves body and soul, mind and spirit to Jesus. I'm going to close this off by uh, giving you one of my favorite prayers. You may recognize it. It's, uh, I believe it's the prayer of St. Thomas. So join me in prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. We continue our service with our hymn of the day, which today is in 410 for those who want to follow along with the music. The song is All Glory Be to God on High. Let us rise to his glory. Oh, God. 
Now, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostolic Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Hear us, O God. church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Oh Lord, we pray for healing for all those who suffer. We especially pray, oh Lord, for our nation that grieves once again this day over the loss of lives in San Jose, California. Oh Lord, we pray for those who have died. We pray for those families who grieve. And we pray for our nation that we might find healing. We also pray, O oh Lord, for all of those who are living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. We pray for those who continue the struggle against COVID-19. We pray for those who have lost loved ones who grieve this day. We pray for those who are still hospitalized or ill at home. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of those first-line workers who stand between us and this illness. Lord, give them strength and power and protection. And we also pray for those in our midst who cry out to you. We pray for Leslie, for Chad, for Don, for Barbara, Monica, Lynn, Bob, Triton, Calvin, Levon, Patty, Donetta, Patrick, Marion, Rob, Rayona, Jean, Tony, George, Sherman, and those whose names we now lift up to you. We pray for this worshiping community that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. We 
remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. On this Memorial Day, we remember our fallen heroes and all those who have given all for this country. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Again, this is the point where we would be going around greeting one another, but we really don't want to do that yet. So we're going to do the two-handed wave. So just do a 360 and wave both hands and say, hi. I didn't hear anybody. Hi. hi. That's more like it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we would be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance and I now return you to our service. us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <coughs>
one, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. Take and drink, for this is the blood of Christ. And now may this body and this blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask as you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. I ask you to rise for the singing of our sending hymn, which is one of my favorites. I love the tune. Come, join the dance of Trinity. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Well, it was good seeing all of you again. I hope to see you all next Sunday. Oh, you have something to say, Tim? Uh, what, what's, when are we starting that? Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, we're going to start fellowship. For those who are comfortable with that, uh, we're going to be outside if the weather permits. So we're, we're not going to go downstairs to the basement. We're going to go out to the pavilion. We're out in fresh air and got a lot of space. So we'll have coffee, hopefully. Barb is in charge of it. We've got to have coffee, juices. She's making omelets. Also, crepe <laughs> Suzette. Um, no? I thought that's what you... I thought <laughs> lobster. <laughs> lobster thermidor, and now we're gonna have we'll have some uh, snack, maybe some donuts or whatever, and some coffee and maybe juice. But we hope you'll all be able to join us again. We'll be out in the pavilion, so it's out in fresh air. So those who are comfortable with joining us, please do. If you want to wear your mask out there, please do. Do whatever is, is most comfortable for you right now. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Also, I want to thank uh, uh, Ron. Uh, Helen and Charlie, I'm always mispronouncing your last name, and Don for the flowers. Uh, Don put the flowers on the uh, organ, and Helen and Charlie put the flowers on the altar, although I think it was more Helen than Charlie. But uh, <laughs> anyways, they're beautiful, and they add so much to our worship. And I know everybody says they, they put them on. You don't have to thank us. Yes, I do. Thank you very much for the flowers. We appreciate it every Sunday. It adds so much to our worship. And so with that, now go in peace. You are the body of Christ.